you for joining me today. I'm Pastor Diane Chamberlain from the Ladder House Kingdom Ministries in Cumming, Missouri, and welcome to The Time Is Now. You know, we're in the body of Christ today. I'm, I'm so excited about the things God's speaking and the things God's doing with us in the body of Christ. But in the same um, time, we need to be aware that also the enemy wants to attack us. He wants to come against us. He wants to destroy us. You know, it tells us in the Word of God that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, according to John 10, 10. But God says, I've came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So we have an enemy that wars after the promises of God and wars after the things that God has for his people. But, I, you know, this is a time that God wants us to understand that even as the body of Christ, you know, at the beginning of the year, we talked about um, that this year is actually uh, the Hebraic year of Ayan Vav, which means that God is working with man. God is, uh, is coming down and he's showing himself strong on your behalf. And you're going to find many times when God does that, that he's shifting things inside of you. He's, he's showing you your weaknesses as well as your strengths. He's showing you things that he wants you to change, maybe as far as attitudes and as maybe as far as things that you're, you're walking in, emotional things. But he's working with you to to conform you more to his image and to his likeness. And I love that about God because he wants us to be in his presence. But in the same, same way, he wants us to be whole. He doesn't want us to be fragmented. He doesn't want us uh, to lack anything, but he wants us to be complete in him. And that's what I love about God because he's a loving God. He's a God that wants to bring wholeness. He wants to bring a wellness to us. He wants to set boundaries for us. You know, many times in the body of Christ, we just don't have boundaries. We don't know what those boundaries are, but God's a God about boundaries. But he's also God that wants us to walk in faith. He wants us to walk in humility. And, uh, you know, this year he was really, or this month actually, he started showing me some things about presumption. And I want to share with you today about that word presumption because God says my people are being destroyed for presumption. And I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And he was showing me some examples of things that we were facing in our own ministry and the own body of Christ. And even when I, I talked to other pastors uh, across the, the nations of the world, even those in the United States, I'm, I'm hearing the same thing that many times you're dealing with issues because of presumptions. And so, you know, God's saying this is a time that he wants us, as far as his believers, to be very intimate with him, to be very close to him. And if you look at Psalms 91, if you have your Bible, I want you to turn with me to Psalms 91. Because it talks about us as believers. It says, He that dwell in verse 1, in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will save the Lord. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. You know, there is a trust level as we, as members of the body of Christ, should have in Christ. We shouldn't trust our own knowledge, our own intellect, how smart I am, how much education I have. But you know what? Our trust should be in Christ Jesus. It should be a trust in his word. It's actually written logos, which is the Bible. Our trust should be in that that we hear that the, uh, that our, that the preacher may preach to us as far as our pastor, the words that we hear in Bible study. Our trust should, should be in even the Holy Spirit as he speaks to our spirit. We should be able to trust the words that he says to us, that they're accurate and that they're sound. Why? Because God, when he speaks to us, his words should line up with what the Bible actually tells us and teaches us. God's not going to speak to us anything contrary to his word of God. So if, you, if you're hearing God's voice and it's contrary to what the written word actually says to us, then we know that's not God's voice because the Bible tells us there's many voices in the world. But as believers, uh, God is causing us to come up to a level, I believe, of intimacy that we haven't even tapped on. You know, was, to me, there was a, in Genesis 1, chapter 1, when God created Adam and Eve and he put them in the garden, there was an intimacy in chapter 2 that God had with Adam and Eve as they walked in the cool of the day in that garden that I believe that man has not tapped into. That I believe this is an hour and a season of time that God wants us to tap into that supernatural ability, that we're going to hear God with a clarity that's going to change and transform not only our world, but those worlds around us and the people that we are associated with. We're going to be able to give words of knowledge that will shift and change people's hearts and minds, that they will really know God loves them and God cares about them and God is for them and he's not against them. And that we're going to be able to show them the innermost things of their heart that only God can reveal because it says the hidden things belong to the Lord, but the hidden things of a heart only God can reveal. I can see a person in a natural realm, but I don't know what that person has inside them. But when the Holy Spirit speaks and gives me a word of knowledge, then I can say something to that person, maybe something they went through their childhood, an abusive situation, which, which, which only God knows what, what they went through. And they say, how did you know that? How did you know I was abused? How do you know that took place? But those are kind of things that God wants us to be able to do is to be intimate with him, to be able to help others, to be intimate with him, to show the love of Christ, to be intimate with him, to be able to change the world around us. Now, it says here that he, we have to trust in him. It says he's our deliverer. 
It says, from, it says be, he's going to deliver us from the snare of the pestilence and from the, uh, from the fowler. He shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings we should trust. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. It says his truth. God's word is our truth. And that's what we depend on. That's what we look to. You know, this is a, a season of time of suddenlies where God can shift us from one degree to another degree. And I don't care if you say, well, I've been in the Bible. I've been in the, in the church for 15 years. I've been in church for 25 years. You know, I'm just, I'm telling myself to, even today, I'm forgetting everything I've learned in the past. And I'm, I'm letting myself be open to the Holy Spirit, all new and afresh. And I'm telling the Lord, Lord, because we're in a new season, we're in a new time. I don't, I have never been this way before. So I can't assume that everything's going to look the same and everything's going to be the same. If you think about it, in 1990, our world totally looked different than it does now in 2016. If you think about some of the things that have already transpired with our, with our government and some of the things that have already transpired in our nation, the changes of different laws and everything, you know what? It's not like it was in, in, even in 2000. And so things are, are shifting and changing. And as God's people, we have to shift and change with the times. We have to be a people who are, are conscious of how God's spirit is moving and be able to follow God's spirit and not stay in a box and not stay uh, back in the past, but to go as the spirit is moving and to follow him you know when Moses and the children of Egypt uh, children of Israel came out of Egypt they came out but you know what they they only knew manna when it was in the wilderness they only knew manna because God provided manna but then God told them that you're gonna be able as you go to your promised land be able to eat the fruit of your own land and I believe God's telling us as the body of Christ today that he wants us to be able to eat of the fruit of our own land he wants us to be able that as we hear God's voice we're gonna be able to transform to change the world we're gonna be able to help others we're gonna be able to uh, even take those seven uh, kingdom mountain mandates that God talked about as far as education, media, arts and entertainment, uh, government, the religious mountain, the family mountain. We're going to be able to take those, the business mountain, take those things back for the kingdom of God. And it's not as in a religious form, but it's just letting God know that God should be in every fiber of, of, our, of our, not only our being, but every fiber of what he created. He created man, but yet he created the earth. And if God's a part of the earth, then we want him to, to be able to have his, his laws being a part of the earth. We want him to be able uh, to see his glory in the part of the earth. We want him to be, we want to be able to to uh, function and to see him move by his spirit in a fresh new way and in a way that we can demonstrate him. You know, we the people of God should be demonstrating Christ. We should be demonstrating him by our lives and how we walk and how we talk and how we live for God. But we have to trust God. We have to trust him. And many times I find in the body of Christ, we trust our own self. We trust with our knowledge, our intellect. We trust how we feel and our feelings and emotions. But are we really looking and trusting God? And because it's a suddenly season, a suddenly time, and God's working with man, we have to depend upon him. And I just want to share with you this word that he talked about presumption. And this is God saying, this is the hour we have to clearly, he's told me to hear his voice. We have to really be set and, and making sure that we're trained, we're taught how to hear the voice of God, how to recognize his voice when he's speaking to us, how to know when it's the enemy speaking to us and not God. In Zechariah 3, I want you to turn there if you have your Bibles, because I want you to show how the enemy comes to attack even God's purposes and plans for us. And then I'm going to show you how uh, he, he does this because he's an accuser of, of the brother, but how he does this and how he causes conflict with us. It says in verse 1, then show me Joshua, the high priest. He was standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan was standing at his right side to accuse him. Now I want you to see, he was standing before the angel of the Lord, but yet Satan was on his right side to accuse him. So you have to understand that Satan was right there, and I want you to know that's too close. If Satan was right there, with Joshua, he also can be right there with you and me. He can be right there to the point where he's whispering things in our ear. If he's whispering in your ear and he's telling you things that's contrary to the word of God, I want you to know that's too close. Somehow we've opened the door to allow his lies to penetrate our lives. We've allowed his lies to come in and cause confusion even in our lives. We've gotten so comfortable and familiar with his lies that we believe his lies over the word of God. We believe his lies over what God has taught us and God has told us to do even in the word of God. The enemy, our accuser, wants to get us so close that he can whisper lies into our ears on a continual basis. And if we aren't careful, you might even become comfortable and familiar with his voice rather than God's voice. And I find that many times in the body of Christ, as I'm ministering to people and I'm talking to people, 
and they believe instead of the word of God, I'm asking them, what does God's word says? And then many times they don't even know what God's word says because they're not studying the word of God. They're not meditating on the word of God. They're not even opening their Bibles up on a regular basis, but they're going off of their feelings. They're going off their emotions. They're going off what they think. And those are presumptions. The many times in situations that I'm finding as well as other pastors, people are, are presuming things and they're presuming them to be true because the enemy is lying and he's whispering in the voices, these, these contradictory statements statements are these contradictory lies to make them believe a lie when it's really not the truth. Now, when this happens, when we listen to the enemy, his voice becomes so familiar that sometimes that we don't even recognize God's voice when God's speaking to us. You know, sometimes God has even shout to us to get our attention. Sometimes it may just come as, as a still small voice in a whisper, but so many times we're so busy and we're consumed with our daily lives that we forget how God speaks to us. Are we not even listening to him to speak? That sometimes he has to show us dreams in the night season or in the night hour when we sleep. He has to, he has to reveal things as we're sleeping because he can't get our attention during the day. And then that's sometimes it's the way he has to, to deal with us and show us things that about ourselves or show us things about our family or about our business because we're so busy during the day that we don't give him time. And I'm telling you in Psalms 91, it talks about that person who had an intimate relationship with God that, you know what, even as we're at work, we should be thinking on scripture and meditating on it. Even when I'm driving in my car, uh, you should be thinking about the Lord and thinking about the goodness of God and meditating and thinking about his word. So when situation things come, then I have the word of God to back me up. I'm not just coming off uh, thinking of what I can say or, or trying to help somebody with something and on my own intellect, but I'm giving them the word of God because see the word of God is the only thing that can change someone's life. The word of God, it says the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing is God's word being manifested in the earth realm today. So when I'm able to minister the word of God and able to, that's able to set the captives free, that's able to heal the brokenhearted. When I'm able to give a word of knowledge to someone and tell them about a heartache that they had experienced as, as, as a young child being bullied, that, that's able to break that person out of bondage. You know, this is a year and even a season of time that God is setting his people free from chains of bondage, chains of, chains of, of where they felt insecure, where they felt helpless helpless, where they felt like they wasn't important, they wasn't valuable. You know, this is a year, and I want you to know, if you're out there today, and you felt like, you know, that you, that you, that you feel like you really need to know God, this is a time that God is, is reaching out to you, because if he's, it says he's intervening with man this year, uh, the break year of I involved, that means God is, is, it doesn't matter where you came from, it doesn't matter about your past, it doesn't matter which, which sins in your life, God is there to help you to be an overcomer. You know, he, we are going to be overcomers if we trust in him. The only way I can overcome any situation in my life is when I start depending on God more than I'm depending on myself. And that's what it comes down to. Am I depending on God? Am I really able and really willing to allow him to be the God of my life? And you have to ask yourself the question, am I really willing to allow God to be the God over my life? Or am I just, um, am I just going to church? You know, so many people just go to church. They go to church because they feel obligated. They go to church because it's the right thing to do. But do you know what? I go to church because I love God. I go to church because I want to grow in God. I go to church because he means something to me. I want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I want to have a, a relationship with God. And that's what comes down to it many times in the body of Christ. You have people doing things because, well, my mother makes me go. Oh, my father makes me go. I go because my parents or I go because my boyfriend goes or my grandmother went to this church. But are we going because we really love God? You know, we have to ask ourselves that question because when you really love God, then that's when he can come in and change you. That's when there can be an impartation when you go. When I go to, to church on a Sunday or Wednesday or sometimes on our special Friday night services, when I go in, I'm looking for an impartation with Christ. I'm looking to meet him. I'm looking to experience something with him. I'm not just going there to say, oh, I met my friends there. Sometimes Sometimes people think it's a social hour, you know, and there's nothing wrong with having fellowship there, but I'm not going for just my, for my friends. I'm going to meet Christ there. I'm going to hear his word because his word brings me life. His word brings me peace. His word brings me joy and his word strengthens me. Now, we have to understand that, that the accuser, well, if, if we were listening to him whispering to our ears, that means he's walking too close to us and that we have an intimate relationship with him more than we have it with God. And we should not allow the enemy to be that close. We should not allow the accuser to be that close where he's whispering in our ears and we're believing his lies over the truth of what God's word tells us and what God's word says to us as believers. It's time for those chains to be broken off us and it's time for us to be set free. And this is the hour God wants to do that to his people. Now, we talked about that word presumption and I just want to give you a definition on that. It says a form of self-confidence 
which makes overconfident assumptions concerning one's importance and rights. It is criticized as a form of arrogance that is unacceptable among believers whose lives should be characterized by humility. And of course, we know our lives should be characterized by humility. Now, presumption, one of the definitions in the dictionary, Webster Dictionary says, uh, assumption of something is true. That's presumption. You have an assumption that something is true because you listen to the lies of the enemy. And I want to give you an example of that. Uh, throughout, um, it's like we've been dealing with some situations, uh, um, and I, I was t talking to some people about it, and um, these situations. And one thing the Lord told me is that they, my people are being destroyed because of presumption. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? So he showed me these two examples within the last two months that I have experienced as a pastor in ministry. And, and both these situations, there was one where a person came to us and was talking to us, and they was telling us that since November of last year, uh, they was talking to us about the situation and they were saying, you, you know, you guys, and they were just talking and talking. And they go, well, I didn't know you all knew, you know, would say that or do that. And we're thinking, I'm, I'm thinking of my husband. I'm, and I finally had to ask the person, what are, you, what are you saying? What are you saying that we know? And I looked at my husband and said, do you understand what he's saying? He goes, no, I don't. I said, what are you saying? This person had assumed that because they was in a ministry and they had a ministry uh, they was being ministered to, and they had assumed that the person that we had in our ministry ministering to them had told us what they was being ministered about. And it's kind of like, well, once you go through a ministry of deliverance or you're going through something, and that person is taking care of that situation, there's no need for us to have to know what's going on. As long as you healed, as long as you delivered, as long as you set free, that's fine. So this person, we knew that their, their personality had changed. We knew there was a lot of things that was going on with them that was, didn't seem, it was off track. Uh, they was missing, hitting some things spiritually. They was, um, they was not hitting the, the, uh, the, the bullseye like they normally do on things. It's kind of like, what's going on with them? So we've really been pray, praying and seeking the Lord about the situation, what was going on with them and talking to them, but they never would release anything. And they found we had a meeting. And then this meeting, when all the truth came out, we didn't know what they were even talking about. And during this ministry time that they had, had, there was another sister there on the ministry team and she was working with them in the, in the, uh, in the ministry and he said she gave him a funny look and that's all it was was a funny look and um, and then she started crying but from this funny look he just assumed because she knew us that and that she had looked at him in the wrong way so he got offended that that he thought well she looked at me and my wife in the wrong way and and I thought maybe you all told her something about us and and it was all a presumption it was all it said assumption as something is true where nothing has been spoken nothing has been said by us and so for all this time he was sitting here and his whole life was being turned upside down he was in despair he was uh, he was offended he, he he lost his trust in us as leaders and so when we sat there and we told him that we knew nothing about what he was even talking about we didn't know that him and his wife had, had went through deliverance. We didn't know that um, anything had been, had been said to them. Nothing has been said to us from the deliverance team or deliverance ministry. And he just looked shocked. And the, and the thing about it, he just he finally realized because the scales came off his eyes that I had been lied to. The enemy had lied to me and made me feel like that she knew something that she didn't know from you all, that, and you all hadn't said a word to her. And so that's presumption. When you're believing at something that someone has said about you, or you believing someone is talking about you, or someone is looking at you the wrong way, and you begin to think, well, they don't like me, or or they're talking about me, and that's all presumption. If, and I always, and I always, like I told him, if. All you got to do is come in and ask us. First of all, the Bible tells you that if your brother offends you to go to him. Or if you need to know something and you're a part of the body of Christ, then you need to go to your brother in Christ or your sister in Christ and ask them about the situation. He never came. So here you have for six months him going through this turmoil, this, this uh, lack of trust with his leaders when all along we knew nothing what he was going through and the enemy was sitting there laughing at him and destroying his life as well as his family's. And so, you know, of course, you know, he repented uh, and he asked us to forgive him and it's kind of like, we're just glad you're okay. Uh, and we got to the bottom of it, but God said presumption is killing my people in this day and hour because many times we walk around the body of Christ and we presume that people don't like us in the body of Christ or we presume that sister or that brother has said something about us and talked about us in a negative way without really going to that person and finding out if they said that. We're listening to whispers and lies of the enemy. And I want to show you, even in the Word of God, when it said that the enemy was standing there, he was standing right next to Joshua, the high priest, and he was there as the accuser. He's there as the accuser for us. 
to accuse us and to keep us separated and to keep us divided. And if we continue to listen to his lies, we're going to be destroyed. We're going to be destroyed. And it's not because of lack of knowledge, because we've had knowledge and we've had teachings. But what I find in the body of Christ is that, is that we're not applying the word of God. We're not applying the word of God because God says to walk in humility. God doesn't tell us to walk in presumption. He tells us to trust in him and to trust in his word. And if we do what God's word tells us to do, then we're going to be covered. It's only when we start listening to the lies of the enemy, when we start listening to those whispers, and we start assuming things on our, on our own self. And that's really a form of, of unbelief. You know, am I, going to, am I going to really believe the best? You know, the word tells us in Corinthians to believe the best of every person. It tells us to believe the best of every person. And many times we don't do that. Even if we've been offended by that person or wounded by that person, you know what? We don't wipe that slate clean. We don't, we don't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe that slate clean. We still many times look at them with a double eye. We still look at them like, I got to watch them. I got to watch my back. I, I can't be honest with that person. I can't trust that person ever again. And I remember a situation where the Lord showed me that I was actually dealing with someone and they had... Um, uh, kind of well they had actually did some things and and I knew what they had done and it was really kind of uh, backbiting and kind of very hurtful but we you know I forgave them and we and they're part of the ministry still and we moved on from that and I had to come up with a situation where I deal with them again and work with them again and I remember saying to myself well uh, I'm going to work with them, but I'm going to keep an eye on them and I'm going to watch them. I'm going to kind of guard my heart against that person. And the Lord quickly stopped me. And, you know, he took me to Corinthians and he said, love sees no wrong and love only sees the good of every person. And I thought, wow, Lord, thank you. Because that's what we don't do. We don't line up with the word of God. What we do is we go on our feelings, we go on our emotions, we go back to our hurts, we go back to our pains. And God's saying as a body of Christ that we need to mature in this day and hour. And we need to start looking at ourselves, examining our hearts, examining our minds and seeing where we are. Because only when we see where we are, are we gonna be able to be changed. Only when we see where we are, are we going to allow God to come in and to heal us from that hurt, from the wounds, and we're going to allow him to transform us. You know, this is an hour and a time that God wants the best of us, and he wants the best out of us. And the only way he's going to be able to get that is when we change. But we have to be, I find that we have to be willing to change. I have to be willing to receive what God showed me about that situation. I could have been like, oh, I'm just going to guard my heart. I'm not, I'm going to show love, but I'm going to, cause I'm going to show love in, in a little bit. I'm not going to put all myself out there to get hurt again. And then God had to correct me and say, no, love sees the, the best out of every person. And then it's like, thank you, Lord, because no matter what happened in the past, I have to now see good out of that person. And if I really did forgive that person, then I'm not looking back at their past. I'm not looking back at what they did to hurt me. And that's what we don't do in the body of Christ that we need to start doing once again. We need to live the word out. We need to walk in the word every day of our lives. And we need to make sure that we are, co are correcting ourselves if we have not found ourselves lining up properly and correctly with the word of God. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is here to help you. You know, he's not, he's not gonna say, I'm gonna show you something and reveal something to you and not help you to walk through that. He will help you walk through it and we show you the way to go. Now that's presumption. Now, in the process of that, what God's telling us, that he's looking for a people that, that have humility. He's looking for a people, instead of walking in presumption, that we have to be a people who's walking in humility. And I'm going to share with you uh, later about another situation where there was presumption that was being taken place. You know what? Presumption is going to kill us. If we continue to let presumption rule and reign uh, over our minds and our hearts, it's going to take us out. You know, James 4.10 tells us to humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. There has to be humility in the body of Christ. Uh, it has to be humility that we are going to forgive one another. We're going to love one another. We're going to work together with one another because Christ has called us to do that, to be able to work together, to love one another and support one another in love. Now, uh, go back to presumption. It says it's an unwarrantable, unbecoming or impertinent boldness. You know what? You can be very bold when you presume that you're right. I have never seen so many people that have presumed that they was right about a situation. And with that, they've gotten so bold, and it's almost to the point of being obnoxious with their boldness because they believe they're so right until, the, until you get in a meeting with them and with other people, and then they realize that they have believed the whispers and the lies of the enemy. And once again, it says the enemy's gonna come He's, and it says if he comes in like a flood, but God says, I've raised up a standard against him. You know, God's raised up a standard today, even against the enemy. But we're going to allow him, God, to show us the enemy 
where he's at and what he's doing in our lives. Are we going to allow and be able to see how he's coming in to destroy us and, and take note of that and then be willing to work with that? And part two of this program, I'm going to talk to you more about this, this word presumption and how even the Israelites uh, and, and Moses, how they ignored his orders because of presumption. And there's times in our lives you have to ask yourself, how many times have I been a person that have allowed presumption to rule and reign over my life? You know, I, I taught this message uh, uh, on one of our services, and uh, it was a special night on a Friday night, and I taught this. And uh, afterwards, we, uh, the Lord had me call everyone up there, and I prayed over them. But it was amazing. Um, um, the majority of the church came forth. Uh, I mean, it was like more than three-fourths of the church. It was almost the whole church came forth because people have found themselves presuming things about their sisters and brothers in Christ, presuming things about people on their jobs, presuming things that wasn't really true. And as a believer, God says, we have to have, we have to think the best of every person. We have to be able to, to love every person and be able to, to, to trust God in every situation that he's working on our behalf and he's working for our good to show us the things that we need to see because there's things that we need to see that we can't see. And I believe this is an hour and a time that God wants us to see these things because we got to get it right. We have to be able to grow up in the Lord. And, and that's, what we, that's when he says you go from glory to glory. And I believe this is time that the glory needs to be manifested in his people in a fresh new way. And this is the hour that we can do that. Now, I want you to know that this program, uh, the time is now, is a Bureau Support ported program. And if it's been a blessing to you and if it's ministered to your heart, I want you to be able to, uh, to pray to the Lord and seek him and ask him, Lord, can can I, uh, can I donate and how much can I donate to this program? Because I want to be able to bless this program so it can stay on the air. You know what? The body of Christ, many times we don't even ask. God says, he told me one time, we, he said, you don't, you don't ask. He, that's why you don't have. He said, ask me. He says, I will give you, if you're faithful to me, God says, I will give you your, your heart's desire. But many times we don't ask. And I want you just to ask the Lord because sometimes when he asks me to ask, I ask him about specific things. And the Lord says, give this amount or do this particular amount. And it's not about I don't have it. I do it because, it's, because Christ has told me to do it. And I always get blessings back. I always get back that that I need. But I want you to know that I, I value your support. I value you listening to my program and being a part of the time is now and in the body of Christ I value what God is doing in you right now because he's causing you to be that warrior for him he's causing you to be victorious he's causing you to rise you are an overcoming force in this earth room today and you are an overcomer and you 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 are more qualified than you think you are and you're going to be able to see this message today about presumption and you're going to be able to correct some things in your own life that you couldn't see before because the time is now for you to see things that you could not see your time is now to, to bless God and be a part of his kingdom. So I want you to know that I love you, God bless you, and I look forward to our next time together. The preceding program was made possible in part by Ranch House Barbecue. If you would like to become a ministry partner with The Time Is Now, please visit www.ladderhousekingdomministries.org. The Time Is Now is a viewer-supported ministry.